Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today we are looking at day four of the feature film Devil's Fortune. And today we are looking at a chase scene, specifically a foot chase scene through Griffith Park, just as it's about to rain. So this was another sort of free floating day on our schedule that we needed to shoot, but also we didn't really have anything else to shoot this day because of an actor schedule conflict. So we decided that we would take who we needed to the park and try and get this, what I sort of saw as a two minute chase scene done and dusted early on in the schedule. The location was Griffith Park, specifically the old Los Angeles Zoo. It is this awesome, it's very steep uh, terrain with lots of abandoned animal cages that they used to keep animals in. Um, it's all rusted, it's covered in graffiti, it has all this wonderful texture and story to it. I had originally wrote the chasing to happen at Runyon Canyon, which is the big, very sceny kind of workout spot um, in the center of Hollywood, but realized very quickly that that was gonna be very hard. A lot of people, too many people to control, too much um, difficulty getting gear in and out of the park. And the old zoo had a wonderful feel to it. It just seemed like a much better place. The scene itself is our lead, um, Connor, gets dropped off um, by his uh, accomplice and tries to lose the bad guys that are following them on foot. He tries to cut through the park. Unfortunately, the bad guys stop the car, get out and start chasing him. And so he has to run through the park to try and get to the subway station uh, before the bad guys catch him. And he doesn't really know who these people are, what they want, only that they killed his partner and now they're after him. So it's gonna be one guy chasing another guy. But if you just have those two elements, the scene's gonna be boring. You wanna inject some character into uh, what's happening. You wanna throw problems at the, both the antagonist and the protagonist and show how they solve those problems, how they try and get their objective. And that's gonna um, say something about them as people and sort of inform the audience about who these people are. I wanted this to be feel real and visceral. I wanted it to be um, fast paced action, uh, but also ramping up the stakes. We don't know why these guys are chasing Trig, uh, Connor. We don't know what they want, only that they're, they have bad intentions. It made me think of the old saying that the wolf runs for his supper, but the rabbit runs for his life. If that were the case, the wolf would never catch the rabbit. So I wanted to sort of show um, how much de more desperate um, Connor is, but also how much better uh, the bad guy is, how he's trained for this, how this is totally within what he does um, in a day's work. He's sort of modeled after Vincent, Tom Cruise's character in Michael Mann's Collateral. Um, Tom Cruise has this great line he keeps repeating that is, I do this for a living, Vincent. In other words, this is what he does every day. He catches people. It's not every day you run for your life. And so you're not gonna be as good as someone who's a professional. There were other factors at work on this day. The weather was closing in and it was actually forecast to rain all afternoon. So we had to try and shoot the scene and get it done before we got shut down because of rain. Now rain doesn't really show up on camera. The individual raindrops are smaller than the individual pixels. So it's not captured as such unless it's just pouring down, but uh, we didn't want to get our camera wet. We didn't want to get our lenses wet. Uh, we certainly didn't want to make the ground more slippery um, and the actors uh, more miserable than they're already going to be. So our plan was to shoot out the 50 or 60 shots we're going to need um, between 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. when the rain was scheduled. Light informed the blocking of our scenes and what order we shot them in. Um, we were shooting against a south facing hill. So there were some parts that were gonna be under shade and gonna be okay. There are other parts that were gonna be in full sun. And the longer we waited to shoot those, uh, the flatter and less cinematic um, those scenes were gonna be. So we shot the open sun areas early in the morning when the sun was low and behind us. And we shot the uh, other areas that were under more natural shade under cover and inside um, once the sun had got higher. This meant we could keep a backlight on our actors. Um, they're filled in from all the bounce of the environment from the sun. So we didn't actually do much in the way of lighting. It was a case of when to shoot what scenes, how. 
and what angle we were going to look. Having the chase start at the top of a hill and sort of have and always have the characters running down added to the speed that the actors could do and also made it less tiring. If we had had this scene running uphill the whole way, um, it really it wouldn't have been as fast and it would have we wouldn't have been able to do as many takes. So we got to set, we started shooting the first uh, couple of shots and I realized straight away that we were gonna need more shots simultaneously. We didn't wanna to have to keep repeating the same actions to get a different angle. So the reason that we have so little BTS of this is I sort of commandeered the BTS camera, the C200, to shoot raw and get a second angle on everything that the main camera, the C500 Mark II was getting. That meant that every time we did a take, we got at least two shots from it. Now there are six basic ways uh, that I know of to shoot a chase scene. The first three are with a locked off stable camera and they are um, panning with the person as they run or um, being in front of the person and pulling focus as they run towards you or being behind them and pulling focus as they run away from you. The next three are moving shots of those same angles. One is traveling with the person as they run from the side. The other one is pulling the person, meaning coming, uh, running backwards as they run towards you. And the last one is running behind the person. And you can do combinations of these. You can pull with the actor until they catch up to you and then pivot with them and then chase them as they go. It's these combination shots that I like the best and I tried to block the scene to get the most shots we could in the least amount of time. This also meant that the actors could keep a good pace because they weren't having to do hundreds and hundreds of takes. I started putting the characters into the direction of the actors. So Connor was running flat out a lot of the time whereas Jordan, who played the bad guy, was only just jogging. Then we blocked it so that even though he's seems to be running slower than Connor. He's always catching up with him. So he's getting closer and closer. This gives you the subconscious effect that he's going to catch him at any minute because he's able to out distance or he's able to close the distance uh, without any apparent effort. Next, we did sort of a piece where the two men approach a gate. Connor doesn't know what to do and so he slips through and Jordan, um, being experienced, just kicks it open. I wanted to show that there's a irresistible force pursuing Connor and he's really going to have to do something amazing to get away from him and so that's what we as an audience are thinking. We actually tied the gate up with paracord that one of the groups just happened to have in his pocket. Uh, we tried zip ties but they ended up being too hard to kick open. Next we had this cool little turnaround so that I like a sharp dog leg turn uh, which I like doing which allows you to have the two actors in the same shot because a lot of the time in chase scenes you're tracking this guy then you're tracking this guy and you're kind of editing them together but the audience doesn't see how physically close the two men are. Right after this disaster struck and Jordan twisted his ankle it wasn't even doing what we were doing. He wasn't running. He was just walking around. There was a pothole. He twisted his ankle and it really affected his ability to run. And I thought, we've only got 40 minutes left. What are we going to do? How are we going to um, shoot the rest of the scene? We don't have time in the schedule to come back here because so many thrillers are just talking. They're just two people discussing information, finding things out. For the trailer, I wanted Devil's Fortune to come across as something that has thrills in it, real visceral action. While Jordan was icing his ankle and sort of like seeing how bad the, the sprain was, there was the main tiger cages next door, or monkey cages or whatever was in these things. Uh, so we decided to get all six angles um, with the two cameras of Connor going by. And then that gave us maybe 10 minutes to get those seven, eight shots. And then Jordan's ankle was good enough that he could sort of hobble through the same space. And we got him four or five times. We eventually sped that up in post and cut away really quickly, but it does look like he's still running. So now it was about 1030. It really had started to rain at this point. It was just drizzling, uh, but we could tell with the weather app that the big clouds moving in, it was going to just really pour soon and, and, mess up our basically rain us out. So there was a covered area, um, an old animal enclosure that I improvised and got Connor to go into in order to hide from Jordan. This meant we could have the other actor um, sort of shoot him out and give him a rest while we had this sort of tense moment of him hiding rather than running. Turned out 
really, really well. We lit it with just a small little 12 inch quasar tube um, bounced off a board inside the enclosure and then followed the actor down this very steep set of stairs um, and into sort of like this faux cave um, the display enclosure down below and he hides there a little bit more. So we substituted out our action for more of a kind of um, cat and mouse hide and seek uh, piece. Then we shot kind of getting out of there and that was our day. By this time it was really raining. We got back to the cars. We went and had lunch um, at the one of the few things that was open because it was um, Thursday. We we're sort of sitting at the restaurant looking at the, at the uh, Doppler radar, seeing if there was going to be chance to go back in an hour and shoot but it looked like we just got rained out so we got our 126 shots in three and a half hours I went back uh, at about two o'clock to the studio started going through the footage and getting ready for the next day this was the first break that I had in four days um, of getting up at five and getting home at midnight so I just needed to basically look through the footage assess what we'd done plan what we're going to do and then keep going it was a really welcome break actually. I don't know how much we would have got done had we shot all day. The scene, once we cut it together, um, looked really good. Uh, I was really happy with what we got. I don't think, I think the actors, even if you know he hadn't hurt his ankle, would have got slower and slower, would have shot the same thing again and again during the day. I think the best thing with a foot chase is keep it quick, keep it interesting, get out before the audience gets sick of it. I'd say this day could have been a total disaster uh, with the weather, with the injury and all the other things that could have gone wrong. But because it was well planned, because I had visited the location a ton of times, I'd even blocked out the shots and the angles that I wanted, we were able to pull success from the jaws of failure and end up with something that, that really works. I hope you guys enjoyed that look at day four of the feature film, our chase scene. Please subscribe if you're interested in seeing more of these and hit the notifications button so you know that we're making them. Um, next time we're going to look at Friday, which is our 12 page interior dialogue monster of a day um, that had its own set of challenges. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.